What makes Jada Pinkett Smith so unlikable? And is people's dislike for her justified? I'm the Deception Detective. I'm an attorney trained in statement analysis, and this channel exists to expose lies and manipulation. Before we proceed, please take a moment to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. In today's episode, we're going to react to a video that Baggage Claim, one of my favorite YouTubers, made about Jada Pinkett Smith. And I want to see if Baggage Claim is picking up on the same things that I pick up on about Jada. If you've seen my previous Jada Pinkett Smith videos, I've done five of them, you'll know that I think she is a sadist. In other words, I think she actually enjoys inflicting pain, suffering, and public humiliation, especially on Will. So let's see if Baggage Claim, one of my favorite commentators, uh, picks up on these same things when she analyzes Jada. Pinkett Smith pokes her head back into the limelight, it's to inevitably embarrass Will Smith in new and unexpected ways. A few years ago, it was to tell us about her entanglement. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A relationship. Yeah. Sorry, relationship. All right, so this, what Baggage Claim is showing here is the red table talk that Jada did with Will. And I covered that in one of my earlier videos. And basically... What I thought about that was that it was a humiliation ritual. In other words, what is the most humiliating thing you can do to a man? It is to publicly expose him as a cuckold, right? So someone who's married, whose wife is sleeping with someone else. So expose him as a cuckold in public to his face and then have him sit there and take it. So I had never actually watched this interview uh, before I did the analysis of it um, a few days ago. And it was startling to me how sadistic it was. Right? So sadists have certain hallmarks. They like to inflict pain and suffering on their victims. Right? So they actually get a kick from it. But most of all, they enjoy public humiliation. So they love to publicly humiliate their victims. And... One of the reasons I came back to YouTube after leaving it for months was because I saw videos of Ruby Frankie, a YouTuber who had millions of followers. She had a family channel. And what she did was she punished her children on video and then uploaded the videos to YouTube as a family channel. And really what it was was a sadistic mother um, basically creating uh, a, a sadist's fantasy, right? Public humiliation. In her case, the victims were her children. In Jada's case, her victim is Will. And just like Ruby Frankie, who used her YouTube channel, right? Who used her platform to hum humiliate her victims. Jada used this red table talk to humiliate her victim, right? So they use their own platforms to humiliate their victims. The other hallmark of a sadist is, um, well, I'll talk about later. Let's see if um, baggage claim brings us up. Unexpected ways. A few years ago, it was to tell us about her entanglement. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A relationship. Yeah. Sorry, relationship with August Elsina, who was her son's friend. But Jada assured her husband and the rest of us that she didn't believe she had done anything wrong. But I actually don't look at it as a trans... Also, regarding that August Elsina entanglement, not only did it make Will a cuckold, but I don't know... Uh, I don't know what Jada's relationship with her son is. But it also did humiliate the son, I think, right? Imagine... Everyone knowing that your best friend slept with your mom. That is public humiliation. Out of all the people Jada could have cuckolded Will with, right? If that was her intention, which I think it was. I do believe she is a sadist. She chose someone who would, by default, humiliate her son at the same time. So I don't know enough about Jada's relationship with... Uh, Jaden, but he might also be a victim of Jada's sadism. I don't know enough about it. 
but just the choice of August, uh, her choice in sleeping with August basically killed two birds with one lay, right? As I say on X, whenever people ask me about um, how it might have impacted Jaden, right? He was also a victim. I just don't know if it was intentional or not. Transgression at all. While poor Will looked like he was dead inside. I just wanted to feel good. Mm -hmm. It had been so long mm -hmm. since I felt good. Another thing Baggage Claim picks up on, right, where she showed Jada saying, I just wanted to feel good. Jada constantly in her interviews takes digs at Will. So if you've watched, if you've binged my other Jada videos, you'll see plenty of examples of that. For example, one interview they asked her, how do you keep the relationship hot with Will after all these years? And what did Jada do? She started laughing, right? Like the idea of Will being sexy was absurd. Right? It was baffling to her. That's an underhanded dig at Will. Right. She's basically saying Will is bad in bed or he's not sexy. It's basically an underhanded dig at the guy. So she does that a lot. And I think baggage claim picked up on that there. Right. Where Jada is saying it's been so long since I felt good. What is the implication of that statement? It means that Will can't make her feel good. Right. So all these underhanded digs at him, particularly in public, in interviews, are red flags for a sadist. With the slap heard around the world, Will Smith destroyed his once stellar reputation overnight. I mean, come on, so much anger, so much angry yelling all over a G.I. Jane joke, followed by a tearful Oscar acceptance speech and a standing ovation from the crowd. Damn, Hollywood really didn't know what to do that night. But The other thing with this slap, actually covered this in uh, this video was the slap staged the slap itself i think is more evidence that jada is a sadist and by that i mean what happened that night chris rock made fun of jada right so he made a joke about jada's hair and as a sadist right so will knows jada and i think will understood that if he didn't do something to defend Jada or stand up to you know Chris Rock's quote unquote bullying, Will would never hear the end of it. I think he could already hear what she would be saying to the media, right? Will isn't a man. He didn't defend me. Or you you thought Will would actually stand up to someone? Will's spineless. I wish I had Tupac as a husband, then they wouldn't be making jokes about me. Right, so I think Will, who knows Jada is sadistic, understood that if he didn't do anything, he would never hear the end of it from her. Right, she would lambast him in public as a spineless coward, as ridiculous as that is. Right, um, he understood that she would use that. So this is the other thing about sadists, which I think Baggage Claim is picking up on here when she said. Everyone in Hollywood didn't know what to do about that slap. Sadists love to put people, their victims, into ordeals. So they love to put them in a situation that whatever choice they make, it's the wrong choice. Because once the person makes that choice, the sadist can punish them. And the punishment is now justified. So Will was actually in an ordeal. right? Chris Rock made a joke about Jada and Will's ordeal was... Do I stand up against Chris Rock and avoid the pain of being emasculated in public by Jada? Or do I not stand up and be lambasted in the media as spineless and a coward by Jada? And in true sadistic fashion, even though Will did make the choice to stand up for her, now in interviews, Jada talks about how uncharacteristic that was of him. I can't believe Will did that, right? Um, or he's, he's crazy. So even though he did stand up, she's still holding it against them, right? How out of character for him. You know, usually he's such a weasel. I can't believe he did that. So no matter what, he can't win, right? And that's a sadistic ordeal. 
But since then, Will Smith has had to lie low. But despite his reputation being on life. And uh, going back to Ruby Frankie, right, the other sadist I covered on the channel and the reason I came back to YouTube because she sickened me so much. So if you haven't watched that video, uh, just be aware. It's hard to watch. I actually couldn't finish the video I was commentating on. Ruby would also put her children into ordeals so that she could punish them. And uh, she actually gives an example, right, where she left two toddlers alone, pointed out that there was like uh, apple juice, um, pineapple juice in the kitchen, right? Don't go in the kitchen and play with the pineapple juice and make a mess. And then went to bed for an hour and predictably, right, she pointed out the pineapple juice to them. They're toddlers. They're alone for an hour. They went and made a mess and then she was able to punish them, right? So that that is a classic sadistic ordeal. Life support, Jada is back again, this time on a self-promotion, well, excuse me, on a book promotion tour, ready to share more facts about her soulmate. Nope, not him. Yep, there you go. Jada Pinkett Smith says Tupac Shakur was her soulmate. Jada Pinkett Smith breaks down in tears as she reveals regrets at her last words to soulmate. So baggage claim is picking up here, right? Again, this is at all at Will's expense. She's basically perpetuating the cuckolding of Will. And to a man, what is the most humiliating, one of the most humiliating things that could ever happen to you. So she did with August and made a big deal about it with that Red Table Talk. And now she's talking about the intimate soulmate, romantic love she had for Tupac while she's married to Will at the same time. So again, she loves to belittle Will, humiliate him, and here baggage claims picking up on another way that she does that with Tupac. Tupac. Jada Pinkett Smith says soulmate Tupac Shakur proposed to her from prison. Jada Pinkett Smith clarifies relationship with August Alsina. I did not cheat on Will Smith. Jada Pinkett Smith says she and Will Smith separated in 2016. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now, <laughs> yes. y'all have been... Dear God, if your marriage is so damn complicated, just divorce already and stop telling us details that no one has asked for. I don't know what this is. I haven't seen them on the couch talking together. Let me know in the comments if you know what this interview is, because that could be interesting to watch. Regarding Jada admitting that she and Will are not divorced, the sadistic aspect of that is that it means that they're not technically divorced, right? So they're technically married, even though they're separated, making Will, in fact, a cuckold in the truest sense of the word, that his wife is sleeping or slept with another man while they were married. So it's no, coinc uh, no coincidence, the things that she points out, right? They are all at Will's expense. The real question, I, I'm wondering if baggage claim is going to figure it out for me, because I haven't figured it out yet, is why Will tolerates this abuse. So I did a poll on X asking my followers you know, what they, th why they thought Will is still a Jada. And the options were right that there's no prenup, so it's financial, that she has blackmail material on him. And, and I think they are Scientologists. So blackmail material is actually something that could realistically be in play because part of the whole process of being uh, becoming Scientologist involves uh, talking about yourself in ways you would never talk about. So that is actually possible. Other options were that they're together for the kids. Um, that Will is brainwashed, which got the most votes, uh, most votes, or that Will simply enjoys the humiliation. And um, I, I can't figure it out. Right? Maybe I should do a deep dive into Will. If you have any revealing interviews of Will, please send them to me. Also, part of what I do when I analyze these things is I try to only focus on what people say in their interviews. So I try to only analyze their own words because the more I know about a subject outside of the subject's words, the more biased I can become, right? So for example, the fact that I know or I've heard that they're Scientologists actually biases 
me, right? Because now I'm actually considering blackmail as a possibility, right? So you can see how the bias actually affects my judgment. So that's why I ask a lot of times, and I've had some great material sent to me through X, right? If you have an interview, send it to me through X, just send me the link, maybe a little bit of context. And if it catches my interest, I'll do what I'm doing here, where I just watch it and commentate as I watch it. I usually find that gets the best results. And it's how we caught Liver King, Nadia, Logan Paul not paying back the crypto zoo investors, right? We've caught lots of liars with me not knowing much extraneous information at all. Four. But no, Jada and Will want us to know that they have no intentions of giving up on their marriage. Since Will Smith says reading Jada Pinkett Smith's memoir kind of woke him up. And Jada Pinkett Smith says Will's Oscar slap helped her recommit to their marriage. Will Smith says marriage to Jada Pinkett Smith is sloppy public experiment in unconditional love. You know, it doesn't need to be, right? Wow. So let's let's listen to that again. Oscar slap helped her recommit to their marriage. Will Smith says ma marriage to Jada Pinkett Smith is sloppy public experiment in unconditional love. And that's like I've been saying since day one of me, of Jada even becoming on my radar, right? So the first time Jada was on my radar, I saw a post on X of is in September, right? Where it showed the post Will did for Jada's birthday, which was a picture of Jada, and the post Jada did for her own birthday, which was a video of her and Tupac. And I asked my followers, is Jada Pinkett Smith a sadist? Right, That one clue was enough for me to think, hey, this is kind of sadistic because it's public. Right, She posted in public her and another man, and it's sloppy, right? In other words... It looks bad. In other words, it humiliates Will. And I think Will, right, this gives us some insight into Will's thoughts where he says it's a sloppy public experiment. So he understands that this is publicly humiliating, uh, publicly humiliating to him, right? Sloppy, sloppy public experiment. And then he says in unconditional love. And this is something I've keyed in on on one of my previous Jada videos. It might have been the first one I did about her, How to Spot a Sadist where when she was talking about her own psychology, something along those lines, she said, I like to fix people, right? And I like to break them of their addictions. She says something along those lines, which to me sounded like a sadist justifying their sadism, right? So if you smoke and I'm sadistic, I can punish you until you stop smoking and tell myself, or at least tell the world, right, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you break a bad habit. The other thing Jada said was this about unconditional love. She said when she first met Will, uh, Will said, I promise to love you unconditionally. And Jada said, I didn't think you could do it, right? I didn't think you were right or die. I didn't think you could actually love me unconditionally. And that also triggered my spidey senses about sadism because Jada never replied, Will, I love you unconditionally, right? So that, that was absent. She said, I didn't think you could do it. What does that mean? That if she ever wants to publicly humiliate Will or degrade him and he pushes back, she can always say, didn't you tell me you love me unconditionally? And if he pushes back out, so he refuses to do something humiliating or humbling or belittling. Will, I knew you couldn't love me unconditionally. I knew from the day one you couldn't do it, right? I told you back then you couldn't do it. You couldn't prove it. You're not ride or die, right? So I can see the traps that Will fell into. And I think he is also aware of them, right? So when Jada said she likes to fix broken people, that is permission to punish them under the guise of fixing them and by telling Will to prove he loves her unconditionally that gives her permission to do whatever she wants to him and if he pushes back he's failed the test of loving her unconditionally right so these are more sadistic ordeals I also notice more sadistic ordeals in society at large right so if you're 
realizing it, it, with a, a particular person that they're putting you in situations where no matter what you do, you fail, that person may be a sadist, right? I'm not a clinician, so I can't diagnose people. But I don't think sadism is even in the DSM anymore, right? So it's kind of like calling someone toxic. You know it when you see it. I don't need to be a clinician to recognize a sadist when the hallmarks are so clear. So if someone's putting you in ordeals or enjoying your suffering or enjoying making you struggle or especially humiliating you in public, like I see these trends on TikTok where people record their partner while they talk about an ex, right? It's supposed to be funny. It's publicly humiliating, right? It's, it's not cool. If someone's doing that to you, my advice is get away from them, right? That person is probably sadistic. They're enjoying publicly humiliating you. So, but also situations in public or with institutions where no matter what you do, you fail. Uh, you should try to get away from those if you can. Also, if you're noticing sadistic things, you know, there, there need to be heroes out there too. So one of the best comments I got in a Jada video when I said get away from sadist was not everyone can get away from a sadist. Right? Just like Ruby Frankie's children. They can't get away from their mom. Right? One actually had to escape from being tied up in, in a bunker under a house and ran to the police. So um, not everyone can escape. So if you recognize it, the more people that recognize these signs, the better. I think that's why these videos are so important and why I came back to YouTube specifically to talk about manipulators, liars, right? I love talking about cheaters, but sadists too. I wanted to add to the mix because uh, I see them more and more now. His marriage to Jada Pinkett Smith is sloppy public experiment in unconditional love. You know, it doesn't need to be, right? Well, we don't want to know. You can honestly just keep it to yourselves and everyone would be happier. Will Smith says relationship with Jada Pinkett Smith has been brutal and beautiful. Another concept, right, that we cover all the time on statement analysis is a leakage. People always speak based on everything they know. So when they talk, they often, if they talk enough, reveal the truth. Like here, look at Will's word choice. Relationship with Jada Pinkett Smith has been brutal and beautiful. I wouldn't describe my relationship with any of my exes as brutal, right? That's a unique word. The other thing about statement analysis is we look at the priority. So notice how brutal comes first, right? Brutal and then beautiful. So brutal, brutal is actually the priority. So it indicates that most of the relationship has probably been brutal rather than beautiful. Right? Just like when, if you were to talk about your kids, right? This is Jack and this is Jill. You usually say Jack first if Jack is older. And if someone says, if Jack is older and someone says, these are my kids, Jill and Jack, it's strange that they would say the younger one first, right? Which is a red flag. So that's why this was a red flag to me. If your relationship is actually beautiful, but there's some uh, downs, you would say it's beautiful and brutal. But he says brutal first. And uh, OJ Simpson actually did something similar. When he was describing his marriage, he said it's had its downs and ups. Right? So downs was first. The negative was first, indicating most of the marriage was negative. Right, because the expression is it's had its ups and downs. So, even though we're doing a sadist episode, there's still plenty of statement analysis involved. And if you want to learn more about statement analysis, my recommendation is binge all my videos. You'll absorb the skills like osmosis. But I'm happier than I've ever been. Okay, guys, if you two were, and if you don't believe me. Check the comments, right? Many, a bunch of people have done it now, and the comments are beautiful, right? You can pick up on these things the more you listen to my videos.
actually happy, you wouldn't need to constantly tell us how flawed and brutal and difficult your marriage is and try to convince us how you're always making it work and you're unbelievably committed to each other in a transcendent, impossible to perceive way because the two of you are just so evolved that you don't even call yourselves married anymore. You know what people who are actually in healthy relationships do? They shut the hell up. Couples in healthy marriages are like a vault at Caesar's Palace. You are not even getting a glimpse of what's going on in there. They don't tell you about their problems. They don't tell you about their ups and downs. They don't flaunt their perfect marriage online. And they certainly don't embarrass each other by talking about how their soulmate is someone other than their spouse. I don't know whether Jada is punishing Will Smith for sins that he has committed or if she's just intent upon his utter public humiliation to see how far she can take. That's why I like baggage, Glenn. She picked the exact same words that I use, right? That I've been using from day one. And if you haven't subscribed to her, um, I think she's worth a subscribe. And please tell her I sent you. I'd love to do a collab with her. Um, her channel is just so much bigger than mine. I don't even think I'm on her radar. Can take it before he's utterly broken. But at this point, this is just a toxic relationship. Whatever Jada does or says, Will is not far behind clapping like a captive seal and proudly proclaiming that his wife, and I use that term as loosely as Will and Jada do, is just perfect. Everything she does to Will is perfect. Will Smith said in an email kind of woke him up. She'd lived the life more on the edge than he had realized and that she is more resilient, clever, and compassionate than he'd understood. And this is the quote. When you've been with someone for more than half your life, he wrote, a sort of an emotional blindness sets in and all you can do, uh, and you can all too easily lose your sensitivity to their hidden nuances and subtle beauties. Jada Pinkett Smith also wants us to know that she really doesn't care what people think, and yet in the same sentence wants us to know that she has done nothing wrong ever. That she had nothing to do with Will's decision to slap Chris, and in fact she was shocked that Will even decided to call her his wife since they hadn't been using that phrase. For See, more of what I said, that no matter what Will did, it was going to be the wrong choice because Jada is a sadist. It's never about being fair. If Will didn't slap Chris, he, he knew he was going to be called spineless. He'd have to hear her say, you know, well, maybe I should go sleep with Chris because you wouldn't stop me from doing that either, would you? Right. So he would be lambasted in, in the press, in private. He would never hear the end of it. But the fact that he did slap Chris doesn't save him either. Right. She was surprised. I can't believe he did something like that. He called me his wife. It's so unlike that, that spineless coward. So no matter what, it's a fail. And that's how you can recognize a sadistic ordeal. No matter what decision, it, it will always result in humiliation or punishment or suffering, belittling, etc for years at this point and that the reason the two of them have continued to stay together is because they give each other something that no one else could ever give them and that always they're focused on Jada's favorite word in the world healing they're always just focused on healing we are in a place now that we are in a deep healing space and we are really concentrating healing is weird a weird word I haven't keyed into this Right. In order to heal, you have to have a wound. There has to be pain. So if you're constantly healing, it means you're constantly in pain. So it's some leakage about the relationship. The other thing, though, I have keyed on with words like healing, etc., is Jada uses the language of therapy all the time. Right. I had to tell my story. Or sleeping with August empowered me. That, you know, that was my empowerment. Not really, right? That was cheating on your husband. You can use whatever therapy speak you want, but it doesn't change the facts. So I believe that Jada uses this therapy speak to gaslight Will. Because if he pushes back, she can always say, well, the therapist told us that we have to heal Right? We shouldn't be holding things against each other from the past. That's not healing. Right, So certain people are susceptible to this language of therapy. Right? It can fool people because it sounds professional. Right, It uses big words and vague concepts. In reality, this therapy speak is a form of uh, manipulation.
and uh, I did a post about this on X a few days ago, right? It's important to listen to what is actually being said. And I actually showed a video of uh, Pierre Polivier or something like that, a guy who's running um, in Canadian politics, where a guy's trying to ask him a loaded question that doesn't make sense. And 99% of people would try to give an answer to look smart. But instead, Pierre asks what the guy means by that question. Right. So I feel like that's a great defense against, against this therapy speak. So if someone tries to use this on you in your own life, you should ask them, what do you mean by that? Right. And that's one of the frustrations about the people who interview Jada is they never give her pushback. She can use the most vague, loaded, nonsensical sentences with them and they will play along, I guess, to try to look smart or to try to appease her or act like they're enlightened. Um, and understand what she's talking about. In reality, lots of what she says makes zero sense. It's just a way to gaslight people into thinking that the cruel, sadistic things she does are okay. And in fact, I'm going to pull up that Pierre video. So there's going to be a quick cut here. Okay, so I've pulled up this uh, Pierre Polivare video. I think this is the best defense to someone trying to use therapy speak the way Jada does to gaslight you into going along with something that doesn't quite sound right. So listen to how he reacts when this guy uses phrases that he doesn't understand. Um, on the on the topic, I mean, in terms of your sort of strategy currently, you're obviously taking the populist uh, pathway. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> well, ap appealing appealing to people's uh, more emotional levels, I would guess. Um, I mean, what certainly, you mean certainly, you, certainly you tap, certainly you tap uh, very strong ideological language quite frequently. Like what? Uh, left wing, you know, this and that, right wing. They, you know, I mean, it's that that type I of ideological thing. I never really talk about left but or right. But anyways, a lot I of people don't pe really believe in that. Okay, a lot of people would would say that you're simply taking a page out of the. Donald Trump. Uh, Probably book. like which people would say that? Well, I'm sure a great many Canadians, but. Like who? <laughs> I... All right, so this is great. And actually, Elon Musk did this in an interview with someone who was trying to ask him loaded questions and infuse little statements into their questions. So I really wish that Jada did an interview with someone who would push back on some of this stuff because I think you would actually get her to show her true colors. And right, like I said in my previous Jada video, I'd love for my channel to get bigger so that I could interview some of these subjects I have because I would do it totally differently than what I'm seeing here, right? For example, these interviewers, they're not married to Jada. Um, they don't need to bow down to her the way Will does, right? Whether she has blackmail or he enjoys it, I don't know what his situation is. But these interviewers do not need to do that. They could push back. So it's a shame that they never do. But obviously, she picks her interviewers well. right? She's only picking people who are going to let her say whatever she wants and get away with it. Concentrating on healing the relationship between us. Jada, I'm going to be straight with you. We're not buying what you're selling. And what you're selling is this holier-than-thou, sanctimonious, spiritually ascended version of yourself that you are above petty things like jealousy and labels and feuds. But we know that's not the case. If you were really above all that, you would not feel the need to put your husband down publicly every chance you get. You would not feel the need to clarify and absolve yourself of any responsibility when it comes to the fallout that's the direct result of your actions. And you certainly wouldn't feel the need to invoke Tupac's name and spill the details of your romance just so you can build up your reputation which is an absolute tatters at the moment not see i think jada uh, sorry i think a baggage claim is slightly missing the mark here jada is not putting down will to build up her reputation right she actually throws herself under the bus to hurt will right so she admitted she's an adulterous wife in order to publicly call Will a cuckold, right? She could not make Will look like a cuckold without 
actually ruining her own reputation in the process. But she was willing to do that, right? It's the the compulsive sadism, right? She she was willing to ruin her reputation in order to humiliate him far more than she would ever be humiliated. Right? Being an adulterous wife is less humiliating than being the husband whose wife slept with another man while you were married and then brought you onto her show to tell you to her face that she's not sorry, to, to tell you to your face that she's not sorry about it, right? That is um, public humiliation to the infinite degree, right? I can't think of anything more sadistic than that in terms of public humiliation. Not because you're a woman, but because you're a woman who couldn't build a name for yourself and find success off... The other thing I don't quite agree with Badge claim here is that uh, Jada actually doesn't play the victim card much. So if you saw the live stream I did about Jada, she did it a little bit there, but I think it was coached. If you watch her earlier interviews, actually give her kudos um, for not playing the victim card the way Meghan Markle or Amber Heard or Nadia do. And it makes sense, right? If you're sadistic, you don't want to come off weak, right? You want to be the one who bullies the weaklings. So it's not surprising that she doesn't play the victim card. I think she started being coached to do it by her PR team because you start seeing it a little bit in the more recent interviews that she does. And even then, she doesn't take it all the way, right? She hints at it, but she doesn't play it all the way, right? If you're playing the victim card all the way, you you say people are right criticizing my book because I'm a woman and everyone who's criticizing me is racist or misogynist or um, you know whatever ism you want to use right that's the victim card but she doesn't do that right she says i wrote this book she started saying i wrote this book for all women um, it's a woman's story in society sometimes women can't tell their story but she didn't do the last part of the victim card play which is to try to shut up the critics by making it taboo to talk about her um, and I've seen some comments where people say, you know, Jada plays a victim card. I, I don't agree with that. Actually, that's one of the good things about her is she doesn't play the victim card. But it's also because she's not um, that type of manipulator, right? She's a sadist. Just like Ruby Frankie, right? She wants to be the tough guy and bully the weaklings. off your own talents. So you had to use the men in your life. But worse yet, you took a good man, a man who always loved you, a man who has always wanted you to be happy, a man who has committed himself to living honestly and build. All right. So here I'm disagreeing with baggage claim again. I mean, I still like baggage claim, obviously. Right? I think we just have slightly different perspectives here. So here's the third point where I don't quite agree. Um, I don't know enough about Will to know if he's a good man or if Jada ruined him because I don't know why he sticks around. Right? He might enjoy it. He might be complicit in it. Um, so it's unclear, right? So we have to escape binary thinking, which is something I talk about a lot in my videos. Right? Just because Jada's bad doesn't mean Will is good. Right? That, that's not a logical conclusion. The same way, just because Amber Heard is bad doesn't make Johnny Depp good, even though I think Johnny Depp is good. So, um, right, if and that's only because I, I followed up on the case and saw the result about Johnny, right? There is no case between Jade and Will. I don't know the truth, right? The truth of both sides has not been exposed. So I know Jade is bad because I've analyzed her myself. I have not analyzed Will yet, nor do I know enough about it yet to say that Will's a good guy and he was ruined by Jada. Right. He might um, be just as messed up as she is. Right? I, have no, I have no idea. Building a family with you and you have broken him. You have elevated everyone else above him and told him that another man is your soulmate. And honestly, we all just feel really sorry for Will Smith. All right. So another good video from Baggage Claim, except for those last three points, right? I don't feel sorry for Will Smith because I don't know enough about his situation. Like it's disturbing and it's weird. Uh, but 
um, I'm reserving my sympathy for people who actually can't escape sadistic abusers like children or, um, you know, mainly children, right? Or someone who's literally locked up by a sadistic person, which does happen, um, or brainwashed. I don't know if Will is brainwashed. Until next time, stay true.